welcome today we will talk about language acquisition general and mother tongue It's for the course number 503 unit 3 in this uh, lecture we will study about how human beings learn language since their infancy since their childhood language is as you know an exclusive human faculty human beings are biologically adapted for language we produce sounds and hear and create meaning out of these sounds we are the only language using animals this is one faculty which distinguishes us from all the other animals human beings use language in the process of social interaction language learning can be considered to be an innate faculty of human beings as we learn language through various stages during social interaction since our childhood there is no exclusive effort required for this we just learn language by listening understanding and speaking a language language acquisition is the name given to this process of naturally learning a language as part of growing up since infancy this may involve learning of mother tongue as well as other languages spoken in the society where a child has grown up mother tongue is normally defined as the language in which the mother or the first caretaker has spoken to the child and the other languages in which the child has interacted since infancy since childhood with other members around that child we know that indian society is multilingual indian children often acquire more than one language that means one language which is the mother tongue and one or more language or languages or forms of any language which are linguistically different for example someone living in delhi may acquire hindi as well as haryanavi so this process of acquisition is often differentiated from the process of language learning now here learning is in the context of learning a language consciously at any stage later in life from the early years in life if you learn a language consciously at a later stage this is considered more of a learning and less of an acquisition we will discuss this issue of language learning separately in some other time children seem to pass through a series of more or less fixed stages as they acquire language the age at which different children reach each of these stages which we will discuss that can vary considerably however the order of the stages largely remains the same there are approximately about 5 stages of language acquisition first stage is called cooing or gooing this happens when the child is about 1 and 1/2 month old about 6 weeks this time a child starts cooing or gooing initially the child produces sounds like ooh ee or sometimes even initially that you you will find sounds like ah at around 4 months after 2 to 3 months of cooing the child arrives at another stage of cooing in which after the vowels until now the child is using only the vowels ah ooh ee after that some consonants are introduced for example koo goo sounds like that are produced by a child then the second stage the next stage is about after 6 months when the child is about 6 months of course it can vary from one child to the other child but on an average at this age of 6 months when a child is generally starts sitting up you will see that children start sitting up at about 6 to 7 months so at that stage they progress to babbling so from cooing or going from consonant and vowel now they start babbling by babbling here we mean that they start producing a wider variety of vowels and consonants which are mostly in the form of single consonant for example vowel clusters like gi 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 it is the same consonant vowel which will be repeated ka 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 ma 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 pa pa mi mi ma ma ta ta sounds like this now at around 9 to 10 months there is a variation in the combinations until now is the same sound which is being repeated like ka ka ba ba ma ma pa pa now at the next stage you you can hear ba ba ga ga ba ga ga ba ka ba ka 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 ma ma pa and gradually it, this grows here also you can often notice 
that mostly first the bilabial sounds of ba, ba, ma, ma, pa, pa are first produced. By bilabial means, we mean that those sounds where both the lips are being used followed by some vowel which is mostly a or e. Now, over the next few months, these express emotions and emphasis, number one, that when the child is producing a sound like ba, ba, ga, ga or ma, pa, there are emotions which come in the sound of the child. And sometimes the child may emphasize also. By emphasis, the child may try to communicate also. And this kind of communication often include the attempted imitations of what he sees, what the child sees happening around himself or herself. To parents, often it seems as if the children are talking to them and they often react to it. So in this reaction, the children also react. Now, this kind of reaction provides children with some experience of the interactive role of language. At this stage, children start understanding that through language, by producing these sounds, they can interact with their parents or their caregivers. Then, the same process continues and gradually emotions are involved. By these, the children can express happiness, the children can express other kinds of emotions, sadness, the child can cry the ch using these sounds. So, different kinds of emotions. Now, what kinds of emotions and the kind of expressions that, are, that the child tries to imitate as given in the vicinity of the children by the caregivers that affects the way the child speaks at this stage. Now, gradually they start including more and more of attempted imitations. The more they see people speaking around them, they start attempting the imitations of the way their parents or other caregivers talk to them. To parents again, it seems like children are talking to them and they again often react to it. This provides children with further experience of the interactive role of language. Now, this is very important. Pay attention to this interactive role of language. Now, this is that faculty which is innate. The child itself starts understanding that the language or the kind of sounds that the child is producing has an interactive role and the child can produce certain sounds and which may further act as an stimulus for others. This means that when others will produce the sound, the child will also respond. So, this interactive role of language right from the infancy, right from the beginning, a child starts learning and thus starts communicating to the people around in the vicinity. The next stage is one word stage. Now, at this stage, approximately when the child attains about one year approximately 12 months, 13 months, of course it can again vary from one child to the other child, but on an average around 12 to 13 months, children produce their first recognizable words. You see, till now they have produced some of the words which we can recognize like ba, ba, now it can uh, of course signify a relationship, ma, ma, pa, pa, but as such they are just repetition of the sounds. They are not very clearly distinct sounds as recognizable words because there is no continuity. For example, the child may say ma, ma, ba, ba, but at this stage, the child clearly starts identifying and starts saying pa, pa, ma, ma, ji, ji and likewise. So, at this stage, you notice that not only the same consonant vowel cluster are being repeated, but sometimes different consonant vowel clusters are also repeated. For example, chiriya, kawa, guriya, baiya, and likewise. So, also common at this stage are words like negation. The child starts understanding that there is a need of negation also, and so the child may start saying like, Na, no, khatang, khatam. So, for something which is finished, for example, the child has finished the milk given to the child. So, the child can say khatang, khatang, 
khatam often you will see that same words are being repeated the child may not stop at speaking only khatam or khatam but the child may say khatam khatam or khatam khatam so this is the another stage where the child has now started acquiring one word communication skills this stage is often referred to as the technical name given is sometimes holophrastic which means meaning of a single word functioning as a sentence so one word is whole phrase is whole sentence by saying khatang the child means that the milk given to the child is finished but the same word may be repeated twice thrice four times the ch child can repeat it many times also but the word will be the same and by that the child would like to convey that the milk given to the child is finished so this is called technically sometimes holophrastic stage in this holophrastic stage instead of saying i want water the child may say sometimes mom mom now you see mom mom it doesn't mean water as such but the child may repeat mom mom or many such words different children acquire differently in hindi speaking areas in india mom mom is commonly acquired by children so this mom mom may mean also something which is warm may means also that the child wants water and for a variety of expressions th the same kind of sounds will be repeated by the child now it is for the care 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 givers or the parents to understand what the child wants to convey sometimes the elder the elder siblings understand children better because they are closer to that experience this is a very common experience at every um, household and you will find that this holophrastic stage is often enjoyed by the elders in the sense that they always try to guess what the child wants to convey then comes the next stage where there is also the stage where children start making mistakes in this holophrastic stage only when it grows further because it is there is too much of over generalization and sometimes under generalization the parents might make mistakes the children also don't understand how to convey exactly what they wish but by using the same words they may convey different things the child may over generalize at this stage for example if the child has learned doggy then even if you show a, a tiger's picture the child may say doggy so any four legged animal may become doggy even a cat may be called a doggy so this is what we call over generalization and sometimes it is just the other way around the under generalization also for example the child may use the word duck only for the toy duck so duck has a, a general meaning but by the word by using the word duck the child may mean toy duck or if there is a pet at home let's say there is a doggy at home then the child may say doggy only for that doggy the doggy may also have a name but it is possible that the child has not yet started pronouncing the name of that uh, doggy but that particular animal which is in the vicinity of the child becomes doggy and for the other animals the child may acquire some other word also so this is stage of one word stage is sometimes also a stage of over generalization and under generalization now when this goes further approximately at the age of about 18 months to 20 months the child starts acquiring and using two words a child generally has an active vocabulary of approximately 30 to 50 words approximately 50 words it depends upon how many words in the vicinity by the caregivers are being used so approximately on an average 50 words by this time the child has acquired approximately about at the age of one and a half years and at this stage the child start putting two word utterances sometimes the child is using two words for example if the milk is finished the child may say dudhu nahi in in lieu of saying khatam the child may say now dudhu nahi khana nahi now these examples are from hindi speakers in other languages also you may find that at this stage the child has started to learn negation and joining two words in lieu of saying khatam the child may now learn to say dudhu khatam 
और समथिंग दे दो बॉल दे दो रोटी दे दो रोटी मे बी अभी डिफिकल्ट बट दूध दे दो सो आस्किंग फॉर समथिंग द चाइल्ड मे एक्वायर दीज एग्जाम्पल्स आर फ्रॉम द हिंदी स्पीकरस इन अदर लैंग्वेज ऑल्सो यू मे फाइंड सिमिलर एग्जाम्पल्स बट दिस स्टेज वेयर टू वर्ड्स आर बींग कम्बाइंड चाइल्ड अराइव एट दिस स्टेज अप्रॉक्सिमेटली एट अबाउट एटीन मंथस टू ट्वेंटी मंथस ऑन एन एवरेज नाउ एट दिस स्टेज there are new kinds of meanings which begin to appear a little later for example you can hear from hindi speaker sounds like mummy khana mummy khana now mummy i want whether rice or anything to eat any roti any kind of bread or anything to eat the child may start using new words which is spoken in the vicinity of the child earlier also the words were spoken but the child has not yet learned to imitate those words and also notice that now the aspiration in lieu of ka kha is being used in lieu of do do now the child may start saying do do or do do the, the child starts imitating the aspirated sounds also in indian languages it depends upon the language also that what are the difficulty levels of language that may determine that what kind of difficult sounds relatively mixed sounds the child is learning to speak so at this stage the child may use words like papa phone for example it is papa's phone then papa phone do do pina do do pina or do do pina and by using these two words the child may mean i want milk or whatever the child wants to convey but at this stage the child is using two words for a sentence this means that child has now started making connections between the words now this is again an innate faculty as i said earlier also that learning language is what distinguishes us from other animals this is an extremely innate faculty to human beings when we start making connections between words as children and it is not taught they just start imitating and by imitating they make new connections between words which they have not yet perhaps heard also so this is again a faculty of language that we can make such connections between words which we have not yet heard of which we have not learnt by imitation yet we can produce and it starts at this stage now you may say that at this stage children's utterances begin to resemble the structures of sentences now in a language which is being spoken around the child there is definitely a structure of a sentence every native speaker knows that a structure may, may or the, the native speaker may or may not know the grammar but certainly knows the structure and uses the structures of the language unknowingly unconsciously and children also start acquiring those structures of sentences now this is speech at this stage is sometimes referred to technically as telegraphic earlier we have talked about holographic which is one word communication now we are talking about the telegraphic communication telegraphic speech as it is very closely related to the telegraph messages which only have content words if you remember if you know about the telegraphic messages which had only the content words mainly the content words other words will not be there the grammatical terms will not be there by grammatical terms for example prepositions will not be used the different kind of conjugations for the verbs will not be used but the content words do do pina now these two are the content words do is for milk and pina for drink so only these two will be used now at this stage the child does not use little words for example little words by that i meant the grammatical purposes words the words which are used for grammatical purposes for example you in in hindi language you can hear words like ne ko or maine khaya ne is used but dudhu ko pina the child may not say that. the child may say only dudhu pina dudhu pi raha no the child will not say the child will say dudhu pina dudhu pina hai the hai is omitted hai is not used so such words par table pani for example if the child has to say water is on the table the child may say only if the child has learned till now table pani the child may not learn 
टेबल पर पानी बिकॉज पर इज अ ग्रामेटिकल वर्ड विच इज यूज इन अ लैंग्वेज विच इज पार्ट ऑफ द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द लैंग्वेज द चाइल्ड हैज नॉट येट लर्न बट द चाइल्ड मे नॉट से पीना दूधू बट विल ऑलवेज से दूधू पीना बिकॉज दैट रिजम्बल्स क्लोजली टू द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ हिंदी सो द स्ट्रक्चर इज बींग इमिटेटेड बट द ग्रामेटिकल टर्म्स यूज इन द स्ट्रक्चर इज स्टिल नॉट बींग इमिटेटेड एंड सिमिलरली यू हैव द वर्बल एंडिंग्स फॉर एनी वर्ब पिया पीता हूँ दिज विल नॉट बी यूज इन इंग्लिश इफ यू से द आई एन जी एंडिंग वर्ड्स विल नॉट बी यूज फॉर पास्ट कंटिन्यूस यूसेजेस यू विल नॉट फाइंड सो द टाइम स्ट्रक्चर रिमेन्स मोस्टली ऑफ वॉट वी मे से एज द प्रेजेंट टाइम स्ट्रक्चर नाउ इन दिस स्टेज चिल्ड्रेन ऑल्सो स्टार्ट इमिटेटिंग फर्दर दे स्टार्ट टेकिंग एग्जाम्पल्स फ्रॉम द सेंटेंसेज दैट द एडल्ट आर अटरिंग इन देयर विसिनिटी वॉट एवर दे आर हियरिंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल पापा जा पापा जा रहे हैं दे विल नॉट से दे आर नॉट सेंग फादर इज गोइंग फॉर पापा जा रहे हैं विच विल बी द नॉर्मल सेंटेंस बट द चाइल्ड मे ओनली से पापा जा बिकॉज द चाइल्ड हैज नॉट येट लर्न द यूसेजेस ऑफ कंटिन्यूस स्ट्रक्चर्स एज यूज इन लैंग्वेज सो विथ टाइम द वर्ड लेंथ ऑफ चिल्ड्रेन सेंटेंसेज इंक्रीज एंड अराउंड द एज ऑफ टू टू फोर अगेन इट वेरीज फ्रॉम वन चाइल्ड टू द अदर बट ऑन एन एवरेज इन स्कूल्स चिल्ड्रेन आर सेंट एट द एज ऑफ two and a half approximately for nursery levels so by that stage the children start acquiring the grammatical forms also they start using these grammatical forms and they sometimes start imitating the bigger sentence words the the sentences which have more words now it is interesting to note that most children acquire these forms in roughly in the same order by the time the child is approximately two and a half children generally start speaking of the objects which are not present before them which means that till now if you put an put an object for example if the if the milk is there then the child may ask or if the chocolate is there then the child may ask but when the child is approximately 2 and a half plus around 3 years then the child starts talking of something which is not even in front of the child the child may not see a bird and yet the child may repeat words like chidiya kauwa whatever the, the the child has learnt so at this stage the new faculty starts emerging where language can convey those ideas which are not physically are present around us which are not related to the objects physically present around us so this means that this is the level where the ideas are also coming up along with the language at least in terms of the expressions until now the child is communicating about the objects which is in the presence of the child now the child uh, at the age of 2 and a half plus the child starts talking about those objects also about which the child may have had some experiences but the the child is using the language on the basis of the memory or other experiences which the child has but the objects are not in the immediate vicinity of the child for example the child starts sometimes gradually using plurals also there is only one object the child sees but the child may use plurals the child may start using continuous tenses also because for the simple reason that in this acquisition process the child has now started learning those structures and about those objects which are related to the idea so it is obvious that in the sentence structures in the structure of the language the child has started now using the other forms of language structures which are related to that particular language only and not to the referential world referential world means the objects which are around which are being referenced in a language so the child starts talking about chocolate which is not in front of his or her eyes similarly the child can talk about continuous tenses there is nothing like continuous tense that the child can see but the child may start talking about using the continuous tenses the may child start talking about the things 
using past constructions. You see, talking about past is definitely related to the use of the ideas or the experiences that the child retains in memories or in the guesswork also because the child can really create new kinds of uh, correlationships between the words as we have seen earlier. So similarly here, research shows that the acquisition of various grammatical structures does not follow the same pattern in all the children. Now this is true that whatever the structure the child is learning, it is possible that one child learns to use plurals first whereas the other child has learnt only the use of the past tenses. In, in some other children you may see that some that they have learnt use of past tenses first and using plurals, using other kinds of prepositions later. So there is no linearity in this, there is no clear defined order in this even though we do identify that the, the, this process, the five processes about which we have been talking almost come in order. But acquiring the acquisition of the structural patterns of a particular language in children is not necessarily in the same order always. Some children may learn to use plural first, others may learn to make continuous construction first and similar variations are noticed in language acquisition by different children. The variation in language learning gives us an important lesson. This means that there are grammatical rules the child has learnt, but in learning these grammatical rules there is a variation. This implies that language acquisition is not a rule bound process. People can use language differently. How we are going to acquire language, how we are going to use language, it is not a rule bound process. Even though the phases of learning the language are almost the same and they do have a certain pattern and certain rule. But after a particular stage, the language acquisition is no more a rule bound process. This means that language acquisition, in language acquisition, it is not simply the practice that will make them learn the rules perfectly. There is some innate faculty, there is substantial variation due to that innate faculty in the way the children acquire language on their own in the process of interaction. There is an interaction which is essential, but how the children have learnt the language and what is the process, there is no rules that can be framed for that. That we can see that there is essentially a large variation in the way different children learn language in different orders. Now, at this stage we should say that when the children begin to talk, they seem to be aware that a language they speak have rules. They have learned the rules of the language even though there is no set pattern of the way different children learn the rules. But they, what they have learned essentially that they are aware that the language which is being spoken around them have certain rules. Even the mistakes that children make while learning to speak correctly are evidence of the fact that children are trying to acquire these rules. Sometimes they may, for conveying past, they may use future rules, future um, tenses and some other mistakes. But what is important here that they are trying to imitate the rules. So that means children are innately becoming aware of the rules which are defining the structure of a particular language. So the language at any point of time is not a jumbled collection of words when the children speak. They are trying to imitate and they are trying to follow the structure as they have learned from the adults. However, in their way when they are speaking, trying to imitate the rules, their language of course differs from the adults language. Yet we can notice that there is an effort to imitate the structural patterns which they have automatically innately learnt. In a multilingual setup also, the child may be exposed to various language rules operating simultaneously and children learn sometimes after a stage, they start mixing the rules and gradually the rules also become distinct to them. So when a child is exposed to several languages, 
if right from the day one or even little later after six months or so also, then also the child starts identifying the comparable forms of complex structure in each of the languages spoken in the vicinity. So sometimes the rules are mixed, but it is very clear that the child is trying to imitate the rules innately. Even though languages are mixed, sometimes rules are mixed, but they are rule governed. So, in multilingual setup also, the children sometimes mix language, mix language rules, yet they are trying to imitate the rules which gradually become distinct and clear to them and thus they gradually grow up to be perfectly bilingual or multilingual adults or adults or even at the, by the age of approximately 9 or 10 or 11, they start clearly distinguishing the language rules of different languages. So, language acquisition in as we have seen is a natural process of learning one or more languages since childhood or infant stage. Now, this is where I am summarizing it that first of all we should understand what is language acquisition. It is the natural process by which we learn one or more languages since childhood or infant stage. These languages are spoken in our vicinity and we learn them by some innate abilities. There are five different stages of acquiring language. First stage is cooing or also named as gooing where the child is only using vowel sounds initially and then starts using at this stage only start using first a consonant and then the vowel. And the second is babbling. Then at the level of babbling the child starts using the same consonant vowel structures repeatedly. Then the child starts using one words. Now after the one word stage the comes the two word stage and this grows up to the use of the longer utterances. So language learning follows rules but it is not necessarily linear and similar at the fourth and fifth stage of acquiring rules. In a multilingual scenario we notice that children learn language rules of more than one language and even when the rules initially get mixed, there is a rule in the process of this mixing up and gradually obviously the children start distinguishing the rules governing different languages available in the vicinity of the children. Thank you.